Hello, good morning, my creative friends. Dr. Manette Riordan here with um, one of the first installments of Painting in Your PJs. And today I wanted to focus in on creating a page about gratitude. I had recently sent out to my email list a list of 20 gratitude journaling prompts. You can find those for free in my Teachable at manette.teachable.com if you want some free journaling prompts. And we're going to be working with this mandala design, this what we call sacred circle design that was created by my son, Connor Dobson. And if you want to play along, you should be able to download a copy of that mandala or see it and make a copy of it here. We'll see if that works. I don't know if it's actually going to work or not. And this is part of a, a new series that I'm starting called Painting in Your PJs with Minette. Starting in December, I will be showing up a few times a week for some early morning creative playtime. I'm down here all the time anyway. It's part of my morning ritual with my coffee. Got my favorite bear coffee mug here and a few art supplies. And I will be sharing and talking about different things about creativity, things that inspire me about my own creative process. I'll be taking questions as we get this rolled out and um, having other people join us live. I love questions. But today I had promised my list that I would show them how I might take one of those gratitude prompts and turn it into a visual journaling page. And I make a distinction between visual journaling and art journaling because me, visual journaling usually has a bit more of an intention, a little more directed focus, pulling out some of my colors that I've just been kind of obsessed with this particular palette lately. I know I'm gonna want some, hmm, maybe some Payne's Gray instead of black. And what did I do with my white? I might have left it sitting over on my table, try to not knock over my lights. I've got some handmade rubber stamps and I've been having a lot of fun moving paint around with this little tiny brayer. I've got a few brushes. I've got my catalyst wedge, which I love for everything. A few different brushes and a couple of more stamps. This is another handmade stamp and a beautiful stencil that I probably had for 10 years and is still an absolute favorite. But what I don't have is any white paint. Aha, there it is, buried under the paper towel. So I'm gonna work with a super limited palette today. It makes it um, a lot easier to get started when we don't overwhelm ourselves with color. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm someone who absolutely loves color. I use a lot of color, maybe even too much in my art at times, but I'm gonna start simple today. And one of the ways that I love to start my pages is by doing some journaling on them. This morning, I've already done my personal morning ritual and routine. I've done some journal journaling, some meditation. I have a, a beautiful mantra that I'm working with that one of my mentors gifted me from a Reiki prayer, which is just for today, I will be kind to myself. Just for today, I will be kind to myself. And I'm gonna paint over all of this. No one is gonna see this. So this is just for me and for your eyes this morning. And as we go into Thanksgiving week, it can be fraught with stress, tension, too much to do, eating too much that maybe doesn't 
make us feel great. So I had some thoughts about just for today, I will be kind to myself by eating foods that nourish me and make me feel good. And I'm writing big because I want to get through this. I will move by moving my body. Exercise makes such a huge difference for me. It's part of my daily routine, whether I go for a walk or I have some online dance videos that I love. I will rest. Maybe I'll take a nap today. I'll make time for my creativity. So that's one way that I would approach this page. But one of the gratitude prompts that I wanted to focus in on today, and I'll talk about how I'm going to do that using one of Connor's beautiful sacred circle designs here, was to make a list of 25 things that I love and appreciate by myself. And this is a hard list to make. And you wonder why in this month of gratitude and giving thanks and the focus on Thanksgiving here in the United States, especially that I might focus on myself because what I know is that I can't give from an empty well. And we're traveling this week. We're leaving in a couple of days to go to New Mexico to stay with friends and family and then have a couple of nights on our own. And so some of the things that are important to me and connect to being kind to myself are having good boundaries. I love my creativity. I may need to be kind to myself and others this week. I have a lot of empathy and compassion for others. And it can be so hard to focus on ourselves, but remember, as they say, you gotta put your own oxygen mask on first. And so when we take time to focus in on what we love about ourselves, it reminds us of our own strength. So I love my strength and my resilience. It's been a, a rough couple of years for the whole world and it can be easy to stay in the struggle instead of focusing on strength and resilience. I love my ability to connect with new people. It brings me a lot of joy. I love my art. I'm a great teacher. I'm a good mom and wife, at least to the best of my ability. I mess up a lot, just like everyone else. And then I think about the other things are my core values that are so important to me. Honest, integrity. I do like to have fun. One of my friends the other day told me I was hella fun, so I'll own that. Hmm. What else? You can see it gets to be something that we really have to look. I love my openness and my ability to receive feedback and criticism. Constructive criticism, not hurtful criticism. I've worked really hard. In fact, I was teaching a workshop on leadership for a leadership team of a small company this last week. And we talked about a lot about where we get stuck as leaders in a fixed mindset versus a growth mindset. And a lot of it was that, you know, getting our feelings hurt when we get feedback. And it's funny because some people, their feedback hurts my feelings, but most of the time I'm really open. So I just noticed that. I approach life from joy and positivity. I'm definitely an optimist. I'm pretty calm and grounded most of the time. I have times when I can struggle with anxiety and depression, but I tend to move through them with resilience and just come back to center. I'm committed to my purpose and path. And 
and I'm a good guy for others. Seeking their path. So there I filled the page with some writing and some things that I honor and appreciate about myself and also about some of the ways that I'm going to be kind to myself, especially going into this week ahead. Get my water open here and away from my keyboard. I'm just going to come in and start putting some color down. I don't care if that pen is permanent. I love the Uniball Air Micro, it's a favorite pen. And I'm just going to quickly start to move some color around the page. And this again for me is where I make some of the distinction between visual journaling and art journaling. For me a lot of times when I'm working in my art journal it's about technique or learning new things, making pretty pages. And for me, I always show up at the visual journaling page with an intention to go a little deeper, seeking maybe some meaning. There's a lot of crossover and people talk about visual journaling and art journaling similarly. But I bring a different, usually, intentionality. To the two processes. This is about personal development, learning, and growth for me. Oh, and I'm just so in love with these colors. And I'm working in an altered book. This is the first time I think I've ever worked in an altered book and I signed up for a beautiful class with Tiara Smith and so I'm working in a, a handmade journal and she's also had some just beautiful different prompts and things and it's interesting working on this very thin paper And I've glued pages together. I've created some pockets in here. I loved, uh, this was a, a fun prompt from, I've forgotten her last name, Cindy, I love her work about being grateful for painty hands. So it's interesting working in these very thin pages. They require me to not have a lot of expectations and to or to manage my expectations and to be perfectly imperfect here. Come in with some of this golden teal. You don't need special brands of paints to do any of this. There's just a couple of golden colors that I really love and buy over and over again, but mostly I love a little more heavy body acrylic. I love either Amsterdam or Liquitex. So I'm just getting some color down on this page, liking already where it's going. Don't know what's going to go on the other page, but that's okay. I want a little more of this nickel azo gold, such a fun color. It might have been a little more than I wanted. But again, I'm just, uh, this first layer, not by any means the last or only layer, but I am going to stick as much as possible to this palette. Looking in a small space here, definitely. And I love just taking the extra paint, putting it down 
on this other page. But I hear a lot that it's hard to know how to get started or how to create visual journaling pages that are beautiful. Well, definitely starting with a, a limited palette is a, is a really, really good way to get started. So I'm gonna get this page nice and dry here. Dry-ish. So when I'm doing this live, you could do it here the dryer. Sorry about the noise for a minute. often ask about you know finding their creative voice and their creative style and what I've noticed about my own process is that I really tend to follow the the same steps over and over again without a lot of variation and I need a makeup sponge here with me while I Digging my little tree here. But I tend to follow the same steps, always starting with writing and then with some background colors. And then just starting to build the layers up from here. And you can see already that I've covered over most of the writing. There's still little glimpses. Sometimes I might start with collage but a lot of times I like to work on a really flat surface and collage doesn't always give you that so I might save the collage images for the end for more focal point. This is a really really dark Payne's Gray. I found that not all Payne's Grays are created equal. Another thing I love is creating my own foam stamps rather than relying on stamps other people have created. And this uh, paint is really thick, so I'm gonna see if I can thin that up a little bit. Because it, again, keeps all my own marks and more my personality, right? And when I start using stamps and stencils from other people, hi Georgia, Georgia's gonna come say hello as usual. So for me, there's something that is wonderful about being able to use our own designs that makes our art even more original. Not to knock stencils, if you saw how many you would have. I have a lot of them. And this paint is just not working for me today. Oops, I'm having a light issue. So bear with me for just a second. Let me figure out what's going on with my light. It decided to move. There we go. My, uh, I had my dryer plugged into the same place. All right, let's see what we can do to get this paint working a little better. Maybe a little more water. So you get to see me working on how the things mess up and don't go the way that I want them. Okay, let's try this again. A little bit better, but not a lot. More paint was the answer, so just really piling that up on there. And you notice I'm kind of putting these stencils, that was even better, a little water, a little more paint. 
kind of around the edges and keeping the, the center clear here because I'm gonna come in with that mandala in the center. Mm, looking kind of grungy, love me some grunge. And I'll let my wipes on my other table. Then I'm gonna, I'm gonna clean this off a little bit. It's getting a little gummy. Normally I don't care too much about keeping my stencils clean and my stamps. But when that paint starts to build up too much in between, it definitely will do that. I'm also thinking I'm gonna just come down and maybe even grunge up the edges of these. And I've got paper in behind just to keep from getting some of that paint on all the other pages. Especially some of the ones I've already done that I don't want to mess up the designs, just putting a piece of scrap paper, not only that, but these pages that are just a piece of deli paper. These are going to make beautiful collage materials for another time. I also love using my fingers in my work a lot. Push that back just a little bit. And I gotta be careful with this paper because it is super, super thin. And I'll probably glue this page to the one behind it with just a glue stick to just create a little more integrity in these pages. Now I'm going to come back in with some white, and we'll see why in a minute. I'm just going to push all of this back a little bit. I want to be able to see some of the color between and around, but I also want my mandala, my sacred circle design. To show up. One thing about using collage on these thin pages is it definitely gives them a little bit more integrity. And I also gessoed the page ahead of time. For the same reasons, it takes the paint a little bit better. This is a an old like hardbound art magazine that I found for 25 cents at a used bookstore. And the pages are glossy and super thin, so they definitely need that gesso. And interestingly, the, the images the color ink on the images is different, right? So it doesn't quite take the color the same way. It took a little more effort to get that, that color on there. All right. So I'm gonna come in. I printed this on tissue paper, and this is gonna be an experiment that may epically fail. So I just have an inkjet, not a laser printer. And I don't know if my it's dry enough so that the matte medium that I'm going to use to adhere it doesn't uh, smear all the black. And if it does, I'm just going to go with it and, and figure it out. You can see it's curling up a little bit. But I wanted to have something transparent so that I could still see some of the, the work that I did behind and have this show up. I'm loving these light spaces. I've got a lot of the dark around the edges, so I'm probably gonna come back and bring some of that color back. But first, let's see what we can do with getting this sacred circle design. So if you love mindful creative practices, we just launched a brand new membership called Mindful Patterns, also at manette.teachable.com. That's all about using these 
Sacred Circle Designs is part of a daily creative practice that connects your creativity and your spirituality. We actually mail you beautiful designs in the mail every month, or you can opt in for the digital option. We have live community calls every month as well. Let's see if I can get this in there pretty flat. I'm okay with that color just bleeding right on there. What I was hopeful about was that my black wouldn't smear. It's definitely smearing a little bit. It's okay. I want that color around those edges because it just helps to integrate the design into the page. And the tissue paper is definitely bumpy, so it's creating a little bit of texture on there. I'm just going to pull that matte medium that's a little painty now. Just to integrate that design right into the page. Yep, that black is smearing. Good to know. But it's okay. And I'm super excited about mindful patterns. It's going to be one of the things that I really focus on growing in the next year along with my visual journaling club, which is getting ready to reopen doors for enrollment in the new year. And I'll be sharing more about that as we go. But in this spread, I'm having fun because I really kind of taken the two things that I love, both visual journaling for personal development and our beautiful sacred circle designs and integrated them into one whole. So that's kind of fun for me. So this page is super, super wet. So I'm going to get that dry. Bear with me here for a minute. the back and watch the video to see if you can even hear me talking and the guys singing. One of the things I'm super grateful for today, it's a uh, Sunday before Thanksgiving when I'm doing this, is that uh, one of my Art Besties is coming to play today in the studio. So you can see this page right here just completely ripped out where it was super wet. So I'll just take some uh, paper tape and glue that back in and integrate it into these pages. And nothing makes me happier than having girlfriends come to play with me. There's something about making art in community that really inspires me and um, like there's some sort of like it's different accountability but also I have different access to my own creativity when I'm working in community with someone so it's one of my favorite things to do which is why what makes all of my programs unique visual journaling club and mindful patterns is that they include a live component because I personally love working in community with people. So I have this nice design here. You can see I've written creativity and empathy. And what I'm gonna do is I'm now I'm gonna think about some of those words that I journaled with before. And I'm gonna write them into my mandala. I'm gonna turn my page here to make it easier. And I am using this nice Uniball Air micro pen. It writes over the top of that matte medium. You do want your matte medium to be super, super dry or it will ruin whatever pen you use. So I talked about my strength. My resilience. The 
I've got my creativity and empathy, kindness. I'm going to keep filling this up, right? So let's see. Creativity, empathy, strength, let's say honesty, integrity, if I add some of my values in here. Fun, teaching. One of my highest values is connection, which is probably why I love teaching live. I also really love to celebrate others. I'm really good at building community. Making people feel safe, perhaps because Safety is so important to me. I care deeply about belonging and try to always make people feel welcome in my communities. I have a lot of knowledge. I'm a great cook. I try to be a great mom. You know. It's hard. Parenting is one of the hardest things I've ever done and none of us is perfect. I think about all the different roles I play and I have gratitude for all of them. So I'm a mom, I'm a wife, I'm a daughter, I'm a sister, I'm an aunt. So many different roles that we play. I'm going to come in here and write around the edges. And I'm deeply grateful for all my life experiences. That have made me who I am today. Still got some wet under there. can be hard to get stuck in all the bad things that have happened and all the challenges of our throughout our lives and just what's been happening in the world recently but all those experiences have made me who I am today and I am a better person because of them not in spite of them And it's not about being perfect. I really believe it's about just being the best version of ourselves that we can. And bringing what we believe to be most true to the foreground of our lives and holding on to that, right? Really holding on to that. Bring some of this beautiful gold back here. I don't know why I always pour myself a hot cup of coffee before I come down here to record these lives. And of course, then all I'm doing is talking and painting, and my coffee's getting cold. So I'm pretty pleased where this going is interesting because on the screen those colors are a little darker. Maybe they are in person, but they're also still pretty dark. This page is already getting some fun color on it over here. So I'm going to come back in with some white. And I'm going to bring in some of these flowers 
feel like I'm always in a growth mode, right? Like the, the um, flowers always represent growth to me. I love working with symbolism and things that create meaning. Being out in nature is probably the most healing thing that I do for myself on a regular basis. Although like this morning, it's 18 degrees outside, so it'll probably be an inside exercise day, but this afternoon it's finally gonna warm up. Some of that snow's gonna melt. Although I'm super grateful for the moisture. So needed here in Colorado where I live. And I love how that's brightening up the page without losing any of the color. And when I work, I tend to turn my journal around a lot, not just when I'm writing, but just making sure that I'm uh, making it easier to access. And our pages don't always have to be super complicated. Yeah, this one is really came together fast, simple. I kind of had an idea before I started, but I didn't know if the tissue paper mandala was going to work or not. And it worked pretty well. It needs to just um, get really dry and then I can decide where I want to go next or what else I want to add. And come in and add some tape in here and probably repaint some of this or tape it from the other side and repair that page as well. And I'm just sitting here kind of looking at this, trying to decide what else does it need? Where do I want to go next? Bring a little bit of that dark back in. And this is how I tend to work. I just go back and forth and bringing things out, pushing things back, getting to that place where I'm really happy with the design. bring back some of this. I've been really loving this Naples yellow hue from Liquitex. I don't know, something about it, it feels like sunlight to me. some color and detail with some of my Posta markers. This copper feels like a, a good choice. This is a permapake. I love these pens and I love, love, love metallics. So on this layer, I'm going to come in with just personalizing this with even a little more fine-tuning detail, letting it be a little messy. You could paint the entire sacred circle design, but I want to be able to see those words and so that when I am having one of those days when that pesky inner critic is rearing its ugly head and telling me that I'm not good enough or what the heck do I know and who do I think I am to be teaching art anyway. I could come back here and remind myself of my own strength 
my own gifts, my own worth. One of the things I've been personally working on the most is just self-compassion, just uh, being kind to myself in all the ways. Self-compassion is so important and yet it seems to be sometimes just out of my reach, but if I can come back to connection to my heart, to spirit, and can find just a little bit of that compassion. It can help me move through some of those stuck places. I love my Posca markers. Again, at manette.teachable.com, you can find those free gratitude journaling prompts if you're, like me, looking to have a more consistent and dedicated gratitude practice. This is just one of the ways that I incorporate writing and art making into visual journaling pages and I find that when I give myself permission to spend more time in creative play I'm so much more of all of these things and I'm abundantly grateful for the time and flexibility I have in my schedule these days My work life is very full and fulfilling and it's all by my own choice and design and it hasn't always been that way. When the kids were young and I was focused on growing family and business, things were a lot more complicated. I'm grateful to be at this particular stage of my life where my schedule is still full but I have a lot of choice over the time and I know that's not true for everyone and I don't take that flexibility for granted it's all uh, it's shiny because of the map medium so it's definitely a little shiny there I don't take that for granted big part of my gratitude practice. But I also worked really hard to get to this point. This stage was, you know, some of it is just, I'm an empty nester that creates shifts in my schedule right there. But I also worked really hard as a veteran business owner for the last 20 years to figure out how can I make this work? How can I support my family and my creative goals and dreams? It hasn't always worked. I've taken a, a lot of big risks over the years and some things worked better than others. I'm pretty happy with this uh, simple page. It's all about honoring myself, honoring where I'm at right now in my life, honoring and expressing gratitude for all the things that I've been through. There's been a lot of grief and loss and mourning, but there's equally as much joy and celebration. 
and it can be easy to forget all the good when things seem particularly challenging. So that's why I invite you to focus in on what aspects of your life, being, and your values are you grateful for. So wishing you and your family a, a very happy Thanksgiving. If it's not a holiday that you celebrate, wishing you a week of creativity and radiant happiness. Thanks for joining me, my friends. I'll see you soon.